Before Control was officially announced by Remedy, it was known by the project name P7, a reference to Prime Candidate 7 being Jesse Faden. Her younger brother Dylan was P6. This begs the question, who were Prime Candidates 1 through 5? The program was started by Director Trench with the hopes that there would be a group of individuals ready to take over the directorship in the case Zachariah was forced into an early retirement. While there is no confirmation in-game regarding the identity of these five individuals, there are some names discussed as having potential for the program. Right next to the P6 and P7 offices, there is a section devoted to closed cases. It is presumed this office contains records of all failed leads and failed candidates. In the room, we find a report summary for the Bright Falls AWE. This suggests that Alan Wake was considered for this program. Nearby, this clue is confirmed in the Bright Falls supplement. Quote, Wake has been flagged as a potential para-utilitarian. See Prime Candidate Program File for more details. Due to his disappearance in 2010, it is unlikely that his consideration for the program proceeded past this. If it had, maybe Mr. Wake would have been considered P8. The second individual considered for the Prime Candidate program was Dr. Yoshimi Tokui. He was a resident of Tokyo who developed a series of guided imagery experience audio recordings. It was reported that listening to these recordings would cause the individual to have vivid hallucinations, which correlated with this guided imagery. During the Bureau's investigation of Dr. Takui, they requested copies of these tapes. It was decided that after a thorough analysis, they would consider his eligibility for the Prime Candidate program. Whether this officially happened was never confirmed due to lack of information on the character. For the vast majority of the Control fandom, this is the extent of the information on Dr. Takui. However, for those who have the PS4 version or modified their PC version, there is an entire side quest devoted to him. Dr. Yoshimi Takui's guided imagery experience shows up in the extrasensory lab of the research sector. Two tapes can be found and brought back to the cassette player to trigger the quest. At this point, Jesse will climb into a sensory deprivation tank and Dr. Takui's voice begins to play. Before getting into the tapes themselves, let's discuss their purpose first. In essence, they are guided meditations that are designed to be used therapeutically. Guided meditations are advertised as a method of taking the individual on a psychological journey through imagination rather than through a real life experience. This is similar to how we are taken on a journey when reading a book. Ink on paper invites us to craft worlds and characters in our heads. For those who are practiced at it, they can become as real as anything out in the real world. Dr. Takui uses this form of guided meditation to elicit images and emotions in those who listen to his voice. The intent is to give emotional and life advice through these means. However, his voice somehow has the ability to evoke hallucinations in the listener instead of just using their imagination. While never discussed in the game, I am curious if these tapes would have the same effect on those who suffer from aphantasia. This is the inability to create mental images. Imagination is not something that everyone can do with equal proficiency. How each of us experience mental imagery falls on a spectrum from good to bad. Very vivid imagination is called hyperphantasia, while aphantasia is the absence of this ability. If anyone is curious, I'll link the VVIQ or Vividness of Visual Imagery questionnaire in the description. It grades you on where you fall on the spectrum. Without any information on this, it is easier to presume that everyone is equally affected by Dr. Takui's voice, regardless of their proficiency with mental imagery. With that out of the way, let's head inside the pod. My name is Dr. Yoshimi Tokui. Trust my words. I'm here for you. Close your eyes. Open your mind and find yourself on the empty beach. The waves are rolling in, and the seagulls are fighting over a discarded bag of potato chips. The first tape begins with creating a mental beach and a seagull stealing jalapeno-flavored potato chips. These little details help to make the hallucination more vivid. In the distance, three trees appear. Perhaps they are ocean trees, or perhaps they are metaphors for how you push people away. The voice guides Jesse to speak to the lonely trees, telling them that they deserve love. These actions prompt a garden to grow in the mental ocean, a garden containing all of the connections these trees form. 
何でしょう I sense a disturbance in our love garden. Go find it. Do not let it darken our forest of emotions. A group of forklifts comes in to destroy the garden, even killing one of the seagulls. Jesse is prompted to shut down these violent machines. You did it. The murderous machine will kill no more. The trees can love undisturbed. Our beach is no place for forklifts or lonely trees. Your mind is a safe haven for love. We can sum up this guided meditation easily. First, we must give our lonely selves permission to form connections with others. Sometimes we are our greatest barrier to happiness. Second, we must recognize outside influences intent on disturbing the peace we create. From here, we must learn how to prevent these influences from stampeding all over our inner world. The imagery used is simply a means of telling a story and making this advice more vivid to those listening to Dr. Takui's voice. That actually was relaxing and strangely insightful. After returning with the second tape, Jesse jumps back into the tank for round two. Dr. Takui begins the meditation on a beach again, but this time he summons a yellow vending machine into the mind of the listener. Jessie is instructed to go get a drink and select her favorite flavor. The machine has run off with your favorite soda. Chase it. Fight for it. This is your favorite soda in the whole world. The soda you kill a man for. Hurry, run! Soda! The soda tumbles out. Victory. But wait, it's not the right kind. I guess you'll have to try something new. Go on. You might like it. How delicious. This is your new favorite soda. When you try new things, you sometimes discover the best of life has to offer. Sometimes we get so caught up in the routine of day-to-day -day life that new experiences are avoided. The first scene of this tape advocates that new experiences are one of life's simple pleasures. Rejecting new things prevents us from experiencing what could be a worthwhile endeavor. In the second half of the tape, Dr. Takui invites us to run and follow a series of lights. At the end of the path lies a dead body. Jesse is invited to touch it. Why don't you try touching the dead person? It could be interesting. This only causes the bodies to multiply. The voice instructs us to bury these bodies so that they don't pollute the mental ocean. Despite being invited to touch it, Jesse is now being chastised for doing so. You're scared of some things for a reason. Listen to your instincts. Accept that the world is random and cold. Fear is useful. Lots of good lessons today. Some things are good, some are bad. Don't you feel more prepared for uncaring cruelty of life? Fear is the most primitive of emotions, one born from hundreds of thousands of generations of humanity and their collective experience. Fear of darkness is because of predators that hunted primitive man at night. Fear of germs is rooted in plagues that wiped out huge portions of the population. The emotion of fear can be studied through the lens of anthropology. Two cavemen are confronted with a great bear. One is afraid and leaves safely. The other is unafraid, confronts it, and is killed. The individual who listened to this fear and avoided the danger survives to pass along this lesson to the next generation. Both parts of the second tape address the duality of this theme. Trying new things and avoiding fears are closely related. Inside our comfort zone of day-to-day -day life, anything outside of this routine can seem frightening. It is up to us to determine which fears are legitimate and should be avoided versus those that would end up benefiting us once confronted and overcome. While they are very different, trying a new soda and avoiding a dead body are rooted in the same emotion. Dr. Takui invites the listener to learn how to distinguish between these two types of fears. This concludes my guided imagery therapy. You are now approved by Dr. Yoshimi Tokui to explore this rotating rock we call Earth. Good luck, Star Wanderer.
stay actualized, and see you next time. The origin and extent of the power Dr. Yoshimi Takui possesses is not known. But as a potential prime candidate, the Bureau likely knows more than we do at this point. The oldest house likely has more information that Jesse never found. More information on him or candidates 1 through 5 may pop up in Control 2. No details were given on why these five individuals failed. Did they die or are they still alive? What would that mean if these other prime candidates are still out in the world? Would they be friends, foes, or something in between? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.